Browser extensions are not just for blocking ads, they can do so much more. And in this video, I will show you which browser extensions are used by hackers to pen test a web application online and some OSINT tools as well. Keep in mind that using browser extensions randomly can expose you to security and privacy risks. So only use the extensions that accommodate your specific task you are doing. All right, and I have my Kali Linux running in here. You do not need to run a Kali Linux image for this one because all you need is a Google Chrome browser. So first, let's start off with a tool called Webalyzer. Let's say that we want to analyze a website for potential vulnerabilities. So we can use an extension such as Webalyzer to find out if the target website is running an outdated technology. For example, we can see that this website is using WordPress for their CMS, which is the content management system and it looks like they are using a bunch of JavaScript libraries as well, such as Swiper, CoreJS, AOS, and jQuery. So a bug hunter or a hacker would check for vulnerabilities that exist in these particular JavaScript library versions. And we can utilize artificial intelligence, like let's say ChatGPT, when searching for these vulnerabilities as well. So let's go to ChatGPT, and I will search for confirmed vulnerabilities found in bootstrap 4.4.1 which is the version of the bootstrap we see in here and i am choosing bootstrap just an example by the way just to show you that we can search for any of these technologies that is being used on this website let's hit enter to search and it looks like it may be vulnerable to xss which is the cross-site scripting attacks by using data template and data content and data title attributes. You can also use Google search for this. And a website like Sync is a good way to find out if that technology has a known vulnerability. And we can confirm that this version of Bootstrap has an XSS vulnerability. So again, bug hunters and hackers can use Webalyzer to figure out what technologies a website is using while gathering information about it. Another cool extension that hackers use is called the Hackbar. It's a browser extension that lets you try out various test attacks against web applications. We can use it by simply right clicking on the target website and hit on inspect and click on the two arrows and here we have the Hackbar tab and click on it to open it. Hackbar is very simple to use and it has multiple features that can be extremely useful. For example, we can use it for a simple directory enumeration test by going to test, expand common paths, and you can choose from either current directory or the web root directory. And this will try to find out the common files and directories that can be used to extract sensitive data about this website. And we can pause and resume the scan and you can hit stop to stop it. And we can see the results in here. We didn't find anything in this case because we can see that HTTP 403 code in here, meaning that we don't have permission to view this file or directory. We can also use Hackbar for SQL injections, XSS injections, SSRF, SSDI, and even trying to run a simple reverse shell on that web server. For example, let's test out the XSS feature and you can go to this website to test out your XSS skills. So again, just to pull up the Hackbar tab, we do right click on the website, scroll down to inspect, and we can see the tab in here, the Hackbar tab. Click on it, and let's go to XSS, and scroll a bit down to Polyglot. Think of a Polyglot XSS script as a universal payload that can bypass several security filters or input sanitation filters that exist on the website that you are testing. So we can simply copy it, scroll a bit down and we can paste it in the search box in here and I will hit on search and cool we have an XSS as you can see cool so hackbar has other cool features such as hashing and different hashing algorithms and we can customize our payload from here as well in case we want to inject a payload and another cool browser extension is called retire.js which actively scans websites for vulnerable JavaScript libraries which can then be used by hackers to exploit these vulnerabilities such as performing cross-site scripting attacks just like we saw and cross-site request forgery attacks or CSRF. For example, we have this test website and if I click on the retire.js extension, we can see that it's running an outdated bootstrap version. 
and it tells us where it found it and gives us the CVE number as well. So hackers can take this information and research this CVE number and find exactly how it can be exploited. Moving on, the Shodan browser extension allows you to quickly display the open ports and vulnerabilities that are associated with the target website. So we can quickly see the website's IP address, host names associated with that IP address, vulnerabilities, as well as open ports on that IP address. So Shodan offers automatic monitoring of websites hosted on the internet. So it will continuously scan the internet and checks for newly exposed vulnerabilities. Think of it as a search engine that indexes vulnerable website data. But always keep in mind that IP addresses can be reused. So this can change the effectiveness of the index data that we can find on Shodan. For example, when an IP address that was once linked to a malicious server gets reassigned to a new legitimate server or service, then Shodan would need some time to update that index data for that specific IP address. Another cool cybersecurity browser extension is called Vortimo. Vortimo is primarily used for OSINT or open source intelligence. It provides us with various OSINT tools such as searching for pictures, IP addresses, usernames, and phone numbers. So let's see an example of how it works. Let's say that I came across this image and I want to find out where this image was taken. We can simply hover over this image and select reverse image and do a reverse image search with either one of these search engines. And I will choose TinyEye in this case. And we can see that this picture was taken in Las Vegas, Nevada and the building name is called Bellagio Casino. Pretty cool. And we can see the Vortimo thumbnail in here. If I click on it, it will bring us to the dashboard. Vortimo integrates with other awesome tools such as Dehashed and Shodan. So check it out if you are interested in doing some OSINT regularly because it has a lot of cool features. Moving on, a great example of an online browsing security extension is the NoScript extension because it allows you to control which script you would like to run on that web page. NoScript comes pre-installed in privacy-specific browsers such as the Tor web browser. And the reason for that is because JavaScript, especially from external websites, can be dangerous and is often used for surveillance and tracking by advertising networks just for the purpose of making money out of your online usage. And when you click the NoScript extension, the first thing that you will see are the domains connected to that website that we are currently browsing. So the extension works by selectively allowing or disallowing domains either completely or partially. And we can fine tune it and adjust these rules based on our preference from the options menu. For example, currently in the default setting, any website that contains embedded website frames and fetch an HTML5 interface for embedding content and anything else that no script cannot categorize will be automatically blocked. And by the way, browsing the internet with no script can be tedious, but it will definitely improve your online privacy and security while browsing the internet. And finally, you can manage all of these extensions that we talked about easily using the Extensify extension. And as you can see, we can easily turn them on or off whenever you need, making it super simple to adjust things for better online privacy based on what you are doing in that moment. It can also be used to customize your browser without any hassle and save you a lot of time doing so from one extension. Let me know if you would like to see more browser extensions that can be used for hacking because I only covered the top extensions based on my experience in this video. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned something useful from it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one.